This RC Beginner Series is brought to you by Horizon Hobby. Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, this is Josh. Hi. And today we are talking about crashing. Everyone does it. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen to you. It happens to us. And we have a problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what happened? You hit what the happened? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> now what can you expect when you crash? Well, you're gonna be heartbroken. It's gonna feel like someone hit you in the gut. You might sob like a little girl. Yeah. May cry, may make a big commotion. Mm -hmm. And that's just you personally. That's not even talking about the airplane. No. Yeah. But you know what? Don't worry. This is part of the hobby. And it down sounds like kind of a negative. But just as you crash the plane, you have the ability to repair the plane and have the experience all over again. And you learn something from it. And you learn. Every time you crash, you take something away that is going to make you a better pilot. Right. All right, so what can we expect to find on the plane itself? Well, one thing's uh, definitely evident. Planes just generally don't crash tail first. No. Generally, all the damage is going to happen in, in the, the front, front part of the airplane. wings or something Because like you're going to come down and hit the ground, you know, something Careful. like that. Not that it's meant to take a beating. You know, this is a good time to plug a video. Which one? The check your crap video. Check your crap. Check your crap. Now we're not cussing. It's an acronym. Is that I get a cuss that right? word to you? Crap. Yeah. My mama doesn't like me saying it. Oh, I hope she yeah. doesn't see this. I hope not either. So crap stands for the four basic things that you want to check on your mm -hmm. plane after you have a crash. C, it's your control surfaces. Yep. R is your rips and tears. A is the angles of the plane. Yep, and P is your power system, which right. is your anywhere from your props, your motors, all the way back through your servos and things like that. We have a video that covers this a lot more extensively, so you can find the link below and check Absolutely. it out. Predominantly, the prop is gonna be one of the first things to hit the ground. Right. So one thing to keep in mind, whenever you have your props, always inspect your props after every flip over or hard crash or even light crash for that matter. If you look here, most props on electrics are made out of uh, plastic, yeah. okay? They're flexible. But you see that little white guy right little there? The little white there. stress mark? Yeah. That may not seem that bad. Don't use it, friends. No. Nope. The centrifugal force going around, the thrust pulling forward, this is a weak mark here. And, and this gonna is gonna go, to bend. exactly. You don't know when it's gonna go, you don't know if it's gonna go, but God forbid it does go, you're gonna have horrible vibrations, loss of power, or God forbid it hits somebody. In the face. They're cheap. Go ahead and carry extra props in your toolkit. That way, if you have a damaged one, you throw it on a matter of minutes, you're back up in the air and flying again. Okay. All right, so you go a little bit further. Yeah. Oh, the motor shaft. The motor shaft. Could this is end. what your prop attaches to. Now, one real key uh, point of advice is if you have a bent motor shaft, you're going to have horrible vibrations, you're mm -hmm. going to get loss of power, and it's going to just rattle the whole airframe like crazy. You don't want a bent motor shaft. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to do that is when you have a new prop on there. If you have a bent prop, it's not going to work. But when you look at the side of it and you actually rotate it, if the whole prop moves wobbles. back and forth, wobbles, mm -hmm. you have a bent motor shaft, my friends. Uh oh. Now, oftentimes motors can have replacement shafts. There's little tiny set screws around there. Yeah. Or if it's a really cheap uh, motor, you may just want to just replace the whole motor for about 10 bucks. Okay. And while we're talking about the prop shafts, mm -hmm. one key thing is, is when these things hit the ground, mm -hmm. they're generally hitting into dirt, right? Yeah. And you can get dirt inside your motor. Oh, so you gotta clean that out. You gotta clean that out. Now, some motors will actually disassemble where the bell will slide off, and yeah. you can simply use a brush and brush it off. Other motors are kind of sealed, and you gotta take clips off. You can always use like a little brush and, and then brush it and also use air and blow it out yeah so you just don't want the motor being bound up and if you hear like gravelly noise in there gritty. definitely have to make sure yeah gritty if you have rocks in there or something you've got to make sure you get all those out or it'll do terrible damage to your uh, to your motor yeah. different motors come apart in different ways some motors are sealed you can't take them apart at all without breaking them okay so you got to be careful about that all so right. we talked about our props we talked about our motors yeah going back to the speed control right now one key thing is if you hit the ground and you don't take your your uh, Hand off the throttle. In other words, you leave your throttle on. Yeah. There's a good chance you could damage your speed control. Oh, really? Like burn it up? Burn it up. So okay. whenever you hit the ground, God forbid, always make sure that throttle goes back immediately. Okay. Kill that throttle in a matter of seconds or you're going to do damage to your speed control. Very, okay. very important. All right. Just because your plane comes to a sudden stop doesn't mean your guts inside the plane are going to come to a sudden stop. That entrails. battery, the entrails, you got mm -hmm. it. If you actually hit hard enough, the battery can fly forward and like hit a screw or something and yeah. catch fire. Like okay. that sudden impact will make it explode. That's awesome. So it's, it's not a bad idea if you're at a flying field. Hopefully they'll have a fire extinguisher around. Yeah. Yeah, some of our friends have even exploded some batteries. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's burning. Oh boy. Do we have a fire extinguisher? I can get one. Yeah, work it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
So always check your battery to make sure it's not dented or puffed or, or any kind of punctures in it. Okay. As a matter of fact, we had the episode, what, two previous to this? Uh, it's a little bit earlier. We talked earlier. about batteries. Yeah. We talked about batteries. You know what? If you have any concerns about that, do not charge it. Do not use it. Get rid of it. And there's ways to dispose of that that we talked about in the video. Yeah, right. All right? Okay. So check your battery. And this is a good time when you inspect your battery to inspect your whole power system. That's the P in our crap. Right. An impact can also cause damage to the servos, especially on ailerons, things like that. Or say the plane cartwheels and comes around and hits the tail. Yeah. And that's going to jar the servos. Right. And sometimes if they're plastic gear or even if they're metal gear, they can strip. Now, you can't just look at a servo and say, oh, yeah, this one's good. Right. you got to cycle it because although a servo may look good, uh -oh. the teeth can be completely worn out. Yeah. You see that? Yep. Nothing there. Okay. Or you could have a circumstance where it feels good, but if you don't check it with your controls and take it to the far throws and also put a little bit of tension against it. Yeah. What is that clicking noise? That's a broken tooth uh -oh. at the very, very end of the spectrum. Need so some you, would, work. you wouldn't know that just just chest on the ground. Oh yeah, I'm fine. But if you didn't go to that far extreme throw, you would never know that there's broken teeth there. Mm. And say you're in a loop, and you come out of that loop, and you want to give full control one way or the other. Yeah. And you don't have that. Uh oh. That's bad. That is very That's bad. called a figure nine, and then now you're repairing it all over again. Okay. All right. So always check your servos and your linkages from your servos all the way back to your. Uh, your control surfaces. Yeah. Because this is connected to your control surfaces, any shock load on that will also possibly cause damage to your control horns here and here. So make sure that these are still nice and tight, yeah. that there's no breakage or rips all around it, mm -hmm. and that everything is firmly fastened. You should be able to move your control surface and actually move your servo inside there. If you hear clicking, if you hear binding, or if you move this control surface here and this stays put, you know you have a crack somewhere. Very common on foam airplanes, so you gotta be careful with that. All right. You can always reinforce it with things like credit cards, you know, little gift cards, little thin pieces of plastic. There's lots of different mechanisms. Make sure they're spent. Most of what you're gonna be dealing with is all pretty visual. And yeah. one thing you always wanna keep in mind is, is the angles of the things that were before their crash, you need to reestablish that. Right. That's why in that crap acronym, we have the angles. Angles, yeah. Angles are so important, whether it's your wing, control surfaces, or your motor and your firewall, things like that. Yeah. If this motor is actually bent down into the right slightly, Okay, so if we glue it straight as an arrow, right, it's not gonna track right. It's not gonna fly the same. Uh huh. And, and a matter of fact, like say this plane right here. Yeah. We had a little bit of fun with this early. See that? Uh oh. If we just glued this back like this, that's not good. Nothing good's gonna happen. It's gonna crash because you know what? Now we have rudder input. We have our control surfaces. Look what it's doing to your your elevator when right. it moves over. Mm -hmm. Everything's changing here. So you gotta reestablish your your actual angles back to where they originally were. Yeah. Now the neat thing about these kind of planes is you can actually buy replacement fuselages, tail feathers. Most reputable manufacturers, you can go down to your local hobby store, and if they don't have it on the shelf, they can order it for you, or you can order it yourself through the internet. So say we didn't want to bother fixing this, we can order a whole new fuselage. Nice. But you know what? Don't give up on this. This may look like a bad crash. It really isn't that hard to fix. Some duct tape. Packaging tape, extreme packaging tape with the cords in it. Yeah. Um, hot glue, foam safe, uh, super CA. glue, CA, yeah. yep. cyan acrylate. Nice. Um, thank you. Big that words. was a big word. Um, those are all excellent to use to repair these. The biggest thing you want is you, you want to actually use the actual surfaces to come back together. You don't want to fill a void with glue. Right. More glue does not mean a stronger joint. Okay. Okay. Back clean joints and everything is, is the best. Okay. And the neat thing about that is if you get creative and you repair something, you can oftentimes use like vinyl tape or, or color tape to actually decorate that area and strategically hide the damaged area. So your friends so, will never know. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing too, is you crash. It's, it's part of the hobby. Don't be afraid of it. Learn how Celebrate to fix it. Celebrate it. <laughs> Embrace it. If, if you learn how to fix your airplanes, every time that you crash, you're also going to be learning and getting a little bit better at repairing too. So you're advancing yourself in this hobby even when you have bad things happen. Okay. All right? So don't hang up your plane just because you crash. There's still hope. Now, it's really important when you're assessing damage on an airplane not to just look at it like this. Yeah, you want to actually put some stress on all these areas to make sure that it's going to hold up in flight. Exactly. Well, just like the, the motor here. The motor's going to be pulling forward. Right. You want to make sure that you can pull forward on this and it doesn't come loose. If yeah. you're just looking here, it may look all fine and dandy, but if you have a crack in your firewall, you're not going to know until you pull, until you pull forward. And yeah. also, if say you're flying and, and that motor's rotating yeah. and suddenly it stops, your prop dunk could get loose. Okay. So you want to make sure that your prop's tight, that your motor's tight. Also things like the wings. You know, the wings are going to be supporting the load of the plane, so they're going to be yeah. under a little bit of tension. So you're, you're going to want to 
you're going to want to bend things a little as well. bit. Okay. You're going to want to go and you're going to want to move things. You're going to move your control surface. So say you have a little tiny crease here. Yeah. You're not going to know until you actually put a little bit of bend on it okay. and feel that. So don't be afraid to actually get into your airplane and move things around to try to expose cracks. Say this crack here wasn't too extreme, you're not going to know it's big until you actually put a little bit of bend on it. Right. So actually torsioning your plane and moving it around is the best way to find the cracks and the flaws. Uh, put it on the same loads that it have in midair. Okay. Okay. Another great thing too is say you know you hit the ground and you have some dented foam here. Yeah. Oftentimes on a lot of foams, a little bit of warm water can actually remold that foam and bring that dent back out. Almost like a home remedy. Yeah, a little home remedy for you. Use real hot water and just kind of run it over there and kind of mold it back out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you can fix a multitude of sins with a little bit of hot water. Well, thanks, Mom. And one key thing to when you're doing repairs, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it clean. Because if, if you have like a simple break like this, yeah. you know, sanding this off and trying to, to remake an a, a area to fill that void, you're just killing it with weight and a lack of a strong glue joint. Okay. Okay. The best thing to do is if you have a simple break, simply put some glue in there, put lots of frictions on it, get the angle reestablished, let it dry. You can always follow up afterwards with some like fiberglass tape yeah. or some carbon fiber strips, which are very light yet very strong, something to kind of bridge that gap and, and reinforce it. Okay. You always want to make sure that the plane is as strong as it was before the crash. Right. All right, we've talked a lot about what to do if you crash, but how about how not how to not crash? To crash? There's a lot of things you can do to prevent yourself from crashing. Yep. One thing is the second you get in trouble, first thing that goes back is your what? Throttle. Your throttle. Throttle it back. Slow it down a little bit. Give yourself time to think. Yeah. Also altitude. Keep the plane nice and high. Yeah. Keep it as high as you can safely fly it because you can make more mistakes before it hits the ground. And also when you get that last mistake, you know, say we always say three mistakes high. Yeah. When you get the last mistake, the first thing that goes back should definitely be that throttle. Right. Then all you need to concentrate on is leveling out the wings. Just remember, throttle back, Jack. Yeah. Throttle back, get the wings level. And then go ahead and reassess it. Yeah. It's much better to uh, to fly away and have to do a walk of shame than bringing it back at your feet right into the ground. But before you even get up in the air, make sure you don't neglect your pre-flight checkup. Yes, your pre-flight checkup. Yeah. Your frequency, your battery your voltage, doctor. your props, the condition of your airplane. Yeah. All those we, things are very important. We talked about this in episode four, I think. Yeah. We talked about takeoff and landings. Yeah. So make sure you check out all that stuff that you need to check on before you get up into the air. And also weather conditions. Yeah. You don't want to fly when it's too windy. I know everyone wants to get in the air and stuff, but you're not going to have a good time flying in a bad environment. So right. just watch the wind, watch the surroundings behind you, around you, all and that stuff. Be honest with yourself. Pick a plane that's at your skill level. Don't get, don't let pride get in the way. Yeah, yeah. It's much better to fly a slow, fun flying airplane than have something very fast and very stressful. Right. You'll get there eventually. And don't get distracted by people like chewing your ear off, like how far can it fly, how fast does it go, yeah. how much should it cost. Just elbow that guy right in the face and keep flying. Don't keep elbow him in the plane. face. But you know what? If he's at, someone's asking a lot of questions, land the plane and then go ahead and dress it and then put it back up in the air. And make sure you don't fly out of range. Keep that thing in its playground. Yeah, keep it in the playground. Bullies live on the outside of it. Yep. And you know what? If you, God forbid, do crash, it is not the end of the hobby. This is part of growing in the hobby. You know, you have to have a little bit of setbacks to learn. It's just going to make you a better builder, better pilot at the end, because you're going to be able to find out what you did wrong. Then you're going to learn how to fly the air, build and fix the airplane. That's going to take away the intimidation. Yeah. Also, you want to make sure that the area that you're flying in, your flying field is definitely large enough to fly in. You don't want to fly too close to any objects and trees or children. Like that. It just doesn't end well. It no. doesn't go well at all. And also, the slower the plane, the bigger your field's going to feel. If you yep. fly a fast airplane, it's going to chew up all that ground much quicker. Right. So go slow. Go slow. All right. Time for a recap. Recap time. Recap. All right. Well, when you crash, it's not the end of the world. No. You can do something about it. Don't you know, hang up your transmitter. Right. You can normally fix these things. Yep. Uh, so you want to look for what happened. What's wrong with it? Yeah. Uh, Check your crap. That's right. Check your crap. Check your control surfaces. Rips and tears. Your angles. And your power system. Right. So you want to check your prop. Uh, make sure there's no stress marks on it and that's, that it's going to bend or break. When in doubt, throw it out too. That goes for your battery as well too. And keep in mind that your plane's going to take the impact usually from the front going backwards. Yeah. So always don't neglect things like loose props, dented batteries, strip servos. Those things are very important even though they're not readily available to the eye. Yeah. And also make sure you cut that throttle back even if you've crashed. Uh, you don't want to burn out your uh, speed control. Your speed control, yes, absolutely. Also, follow the linkages back towards it. Check your control surfaces, check your control horns, uh, things like that. Also, put the plane under load, too. When you're looking yeah. for damage, you want to simulate, like, you know, the firewall being pulled in the front. 
You want to make sure that some that stress on it. Yeah, put some stress on that. You want to make sure the wings don't, you know, have any stress cracks in there. Yeah. Put it under the same loads of experience in flight to expose those flaws, and then address them accordingly. Yeah. Check all your internals, your speed controller, your battery. Make sure nothing happens to the battery got punctured or puffy or anything yeah. like that. And make sure keep your repairs as simple as possible. You can always go out and buy a new piece if it's a reputable manufacturer. If it's if it's a common airplane, most of the time you can buy a brand new replacement piece. But if you keep your repairs simple and light. Oftentimes it'll be very, very strong, but you always want to make sure the final repair is as strong or stronger than the initial initial before crash condition. Right, and make sure that you're always checking your, your weather conditions before you fly. Make sure you check everything on your plane before you ever take it up into the air. And, and keep in mind, because your plane's usually going to hit nose first, you could have dirt in the motor, you could have bent motor bent shafts. Shaft, yeah. Always check that out, check the new prop, spin the prop, make sure it's not wobbling back and make forth. Make sure your servos are working good, that they're not stripped or any broken teeth. Yep, and then put a little bit of resistance against the servos when you're testing those because a control surface with no resistance may not expose a problem there. Make sure there's a little bit of resistance and check the full throws over and over again. You don't want to be in the midair and find out you have a bad servo. All right, so we hope this helps you guys. Remember, it's not the end of the world if you crash. It happens all the time to the best of us. Part of the hobby, but it makes you stronger. Right. So we want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Horizon Hobby for sponsoring this episode, and we'll, we'll see you guys see next, next time. time.